Hello everyone, it's Kristen Redman and today we're going to go over the planetary aspects that are surrounding us and affecting us for this very powerful week astrologically of January 29th through February 4th. And this entire week centralizes and focuses on the energy of this amazing full moon, very, very, very rare full moon that we have on Wednesday. And I think it's fitting, as Saj said, that's the only massive thing that's happening this week because it's so powerful that it's actually taken a lot more than just the past week to bring its energy to light. This is something that's been in the making for a couple of years now, and it's really focusing on bringing some new cycles from these endings that we've encountered over the past couple of years, some thrown on us unexpectedly and chaotically, and as a result, it's going to help us to move forward with where our soul is meant to be now, which ultimately makes us happier people, right? So let's talk about this amazing full moon that we have going on. Not only just a full moon, but a super blood blue full moon. How often can you say we've got that going on? Not very often, and let me tell you why this combination we haven't had since 1981, so it's been 36 years since this exact energy has hit. But in the sign of Leo, this combination of events happening at this full moon has not happened in the sign of Leo for well over a thousand years. So this is something this week that is really pushing us all in our Leo-esque ways to find that inner lion within ourselves, to explore new territory, to fight for what's ours, to uh, find that inner confidence to really charge forward in these major changes that have been initiated since 2015, especially in the past year. Um, now is the year where we really get some tangible, solid ground under our feet for building new structures moving forward from these losses and changes. So I, what I'm going to do here is break down what this moon is bit by bit, and I think that will probably be the best way to explain what the energy is not only for this week and what this previous week has really been preparing us energetically for, but also what it is moving forward for the next year and the next several years, or in some cases for some people for the rest of their lifetime. You know, these this is a very pivotal time frame in the world of astrology this year and uh, this is one of those moons that really helps to propel it into the next phase and really leave some things in the past so let's let's break it down eh? okay so the super aspect of it what makes a super moon a super moon is a moon a full moon that occurs at the absolute closest proximity that that moon can be to our earth as such the moon in astrology represents our inner self, our emotions, our intuition. And when it's closest to Earth, that in astrology, Earth representing the human body, that represents this is when we're going to be the most in touch with our emotions, when we're going to be the most in touch with our empathic side, when we're going to be most in touch with our intuitive side. The supermoon brings that energy. And this is exhausting because it's pulling up some deep, buried emotions. Think of that. That moon is closest to the earth. So it's really going to make you feel deeply. And it's going to dig extremely deeply to get to the root of that. And boy, is it exhausting. I tell you what, it has been a very interesting week for a number of people, for all of us. But especially those of us that are making major transitions into this new year, uh, really big new beginnings, the ones that are really building those new foundations, it has been an extremely exhausting week because it's getting you ready energetically. But in the process, it's drudging up some of that super old, long, buried, painful stuff. So those people that are feeling it even more so are going to be the ones that have uh, a very strong... Uh, sun, moon, or ascendant in their birth chart of Aquarius or with Leo. All right, these are people that are going to be feeling it very, very strongly. And it's getting us ready. 
it's getting us ready because the super moon is helping to initiate some major changes. That's the super aspect closest to the earth. Then you've got the blood aspect, the blood moon part of it. Blood moon has to do with a total lunar eclipse. And when we have a total lunar eclipse like this, it gives the appearance that that moon is red, blood red, right? And that's where that comes from. Now, what this is bringing into focus, right? At the time of an eclipse, an eclipse always represents the endings that lead to new beginnings. And when we look at this total lunar eclipse, this blood eclipse, it reminds us and it brings us back to paying attention to what happened in 2015, the last time that we had these super blood moons. These blood moons that represent massive transitions and changes in our lives and the super aspect making us get extra deep into those emotions. The last time we had those was 2015 and we had a series of four of them. I mean, it's rare enough to have one, but to have four of them in a year was a big, big deal in 2015. Now think back to what was happening in your life in 2015 and think about what the world was trying to help initiate you. What was the universe trying to send you a signal needed to really change? It gave you quite a bit of foreshadowing for what transitions were going to be occurring for you over the next couple of years, whether it was the death of somebody close to you, whether it was a loss of a career and a beginning of a new one, a loss of a relationship, a crumbling of a marriage, uh, you name it, there are major changes, though, that change that footing under us. And so this past week, and this year especially, is bringing a lot of attention back to that time frame of 2015, especially the summer of 2016 as well, moving forward, because that was after these cycles of these blood moons that happened in 2015. 2015 also was big astrologically in one way because we had the squares between the slowest moving of our planets, Pluto and Uranus. Uranus shakes us out of our comfort zone to the point where we need to be our true authentic self. It liberates us. That's what it does. And sometimes it will do it because it unexpectedly forces something on us. We have to deal with it right then and there. And, and there's no preparing when it comes to Uranus. And when it makes a massive square, so this is a difficult situation that it, it works with when there's a square, when it squares up against Pluto, Pluto is a planet of death. Planet is a planet of loss. It is a planet of the death and rebirth cycle that occurs on all of nature, that something has to end in order for something wonderful and new to begin. Pluto is a planet of transformation, and it it embodies that energy of transforming from nothing into something new and tangible. So in that course of those squares throughout 2015 as well, it brought a, a bunch of massive changes when you combine those two. Unexpectedly, out of the blue, things that forced you into new level of freedoms, things that forced you into new levels of having to be more independent, having to be more self-sufficient having to be more accountable for your actions. There's many different layers, but no matter what it was, it was where the individual had to come out and say, oh my gosh, the ground under me has changed and it's different and now I gotta figure out how to make this work moving forward. What does this mean? You know, well, what do I have to do in the next couple of years after that? In 2015, it really made it known that some major changes had to take place. So, that, that is part of that with the blood moon, right? That it, it focuses on um, going back into time. I think a lot of it is. and uh, So that's the super and the blood. Now let's go to the blue moon. What makes a blue moon a blue moon? Okay, people always say that. One's on a blue moon. Because it is rare. Because it's when we have two full moons in the course of a month. Normally we have one new moon and we have one full moon. New moon in astrology represents the time when we manifest what we want, when we have faith that our prayers are being heard by God and, and that the universe is going to respond accordingly at some point. And usually that point occurs at the time of a full moon, which occurs two weeks after that new moon cycle. Full moons represent cycles of completion, just like we were saying that death and rebirth process, right? Uh, the seed is planted in, in the darkness of the new moon and it comes to fruition and that harvest cycle is complete 
at the time of a full moon. So you can see where that uh, that cycle kind of it impacts all of us every single month. Every single month we go through those ups and downs and 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 such. But we have a month here that starts out 2018, which is a year of really accepting those endings and moving forward on solid ground. That's like if I could paraphrase what it is, it's really digging out the rust of the corroded roots that are within us that we really need to deal with once and for all. And it gives us this amazing stability from the second half of the year moving forward on really rebuilding on good solid ground. from Everything that's happened from 2015 leading up until now. So that blue moon, this one, starting out 2018, carries that energy that there's two cycles beginning 2018, which deal a lot with showing us that this is a year of purging. This is a year where cycles reach their completions. This is where we're able to move forward, though. It's not just about the ending. It's about the rebuilding and the moving forward, which is just as important. So having that blue moon makes us extra rare. Now we're going to what that moon is. <laughs> this moon is going to be in the sign of Leo. And as I mentioned earlier, because it's in the sign of Leo, it pulls out that Leo lion energy within each one of us. Leo the lion is very much concerned on what makes it happy, what brings it joy, what brings it uh, its ability to be its protective self, but to be a leader, to be happy in the process of doing that. And... Leo the lion is courageous because it has confidence in itself. So they say that Leo is the sign that embodies confidence and it embodies that energy of being proud of the self. Um, so this is a time when those things are brought out. They're brought into light and they say, do I deserve this? I deserve better. The lion roars because it needs more, because it needs something better. And it's going to be roaring in this full moon even stronger because it's looking over what's happened since 2015 in this last cycle of these moons. But this is where the completion and the moving forward really happens. We culminate all these lessons that have been learned and we look back to the themes that occurred um, and we think, what has the universe been trying to tell me all this time, right? been trying to get you to uh, move forward in what makes you happiest, right? It's not just about the Leo side of it, though. Where all this moon is dealing with is it's a full moon, and it's opposing sign where that sun is at now, and the sky shining a light for us is an Aquarius, and that's all about our freedom. It's ruled by that Uranus I was talking about earlier that makes us want to free ourselves from the chains of the past. Maybe it's freeing us from these cycles that we find ourselves in repeatedly over and over and over again. A lot of times when we find ourselves in these karmic cycles, it's because it is literally karma we're trying to shift and change this lifetime. Energies carried from previous lifetimes into this. And Uranus and its ruling sign Aquarius come through when they free us from those things. They liberate us. And they say it's time to break yourself out of these ruts and change things. And this is how we're going to do it. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes it does it chaotically. And it takes something away completely in order for you to find that inner confidence of the lion. There's the opposing side of it here. You find that inner confidence in yourself and greater strength and reliance, self-reliance on yourself. And that helps you to move forward as a stronger leader, as a stronger partner, as a stronger friend, whatever it is that your soul's moving into its next phase, this is that polarity that deals with that, the Leo and Aquarius energy. So here we go. We've got all of these things combined in here, which have to do with that. As I mentioned, putting it in a nutshell, we're taking all of the old and we're transforming it into something new. And this is such a powerful year for it uh, because we've got major, major shifts happening as Uranus, that planet of crazy chaotic energy, moves into Taurus this year. It hasn't done that for 84 years. And it brings us stability. That part of that stability moving forward that I keep talking about 
is because we have such a big shift occurring in, in that area in the mid-year. But this is definitely a time this week that we are focused on, I think the main thing is looking at the light and the darkness of everything, illuminating everything, because this is the year where it all gets brought out into the light. Those roots that I said earlier that may be corroded and need to be shifted and changed and rebuilt and reformed to the way things are now, how things are now. That's exactly what this full moon deals with. This is a full moon in the year where we have the potential to finally heal these things, these deep-seated wounds within ourselves. This is the year it can happen. But it's extremely overwhelming and it's extremely tiring. So if you have found in the past couple of weeks you are very much depleted, it's because your soul is moving with the energy of this new moon, with this full moon, with this eclipse cycle that's happening. The universe will make it known at this time of the eclipse. If you didn't get the hint from 2015 on, this is where it gets repeated again. And this is the time that we go deep within and we say, you know what, the answer lies within myself and it lies within my intuition and I have to start believing this intuition. I have to start understanding that these nudges and these signs and these symbols and these dreams, these things that I have repeatedly happening as I ask for guidance and help in this massive time of change and transition, where is it leading me? What is it leading me to? And it's helping you to understand that trusting your intuition is going to lead you to where you need to go most. That's where the answer lies is within your intuition. And this full moon is a big pushing point for that. It's going to strengthen our intuition very much. So that way we know without a doubt moving forward what's in store for this year and what has to finally be healed. What corroded roots finally need to get dragged out into the light of day and healed. And we can be freed from it, liberated from that. Thanks to Uranus. <laughs> this year is such a big year for that. But I think the major thing is, this is a year where not only is there massive healing that happens, but it's because we take that time to go within and introspect and work on that intuition. This may not be a year where you go to learn a whole lot of new things. It's about assessing everything that's happened up to this point. Figuring out, looking at what you see in front of you and knowing, okay, Instead of trying to figure all these things out, let me just figure out what I have amassed and what has happened over this couple of years. Assimilate it and, and, and just be confident in what I'm being led to do next. It's definitely a time to focus on that, but it's also a time where I think it's okay this year to take time to nurture the self. It is okay to be a little more selfish this year because we have that. Remember, Leo's can concerned with itself and on its shadow side it can be overly concerned as is its opposing sign Aquarius it can be very detached and very selfish but I think at times when we've given so much of our energy so much of ourselves and and we've gotten completely off track of where our soul is meant to be moving forward this is a time when we reassess that and we do so by stepping back removing our energy from everybody else and kind of focusing it on ourselves. So I think that's probably the best thing this week. It's okay <laughs> to take time for yourself. It's okay to hide away and sleep a little bit more uh, because you know what that does is it gets you in tune with that subconscious self, that intuitive self. That side of us that is super, super close in the super, super moon, remember that's very close to the earth, bringing out these deep buried emotions and gifts and signs uh, they can come out this week especially strong so I think it's best for us to just be gentle with ourselves nurture the self and know that this is a week that big things can really start to make themselves known where these shifts are really going to be making themselves known and the next thing that we have happening ironically is 12 minutes after all of this aligns all of this aligns for this amazing super full moon. 
We have Mercury moving into Aquarius, that rule, that Uranus ruled sign, and this is such a year for liberation and freedom from the chains of the past that hold us back, whether it's karmic past life stuff that we repeat ourselves in and find ourselves repeating the same cycles in relationships or jobs or communication, whatever, you name it. Um, this is the year that Uranus can really free us of that, and thus forth, Aquarius is also huge in that process, too. We have Mercury, the planet of the mind, 12 minutes after all of this is known, makes itself very strongly known. I mean, the universe gives wake-up calls at times like this. It eclipses like this that foreshadow the remainder of the year for us. This is huge. So 12 minutes after that happens, we've got Mercury, the planet of the mind, moving into Aquarius. And it sharpens our minds. It makes us receive those psychic messages like lightning we get new thoughts we get new inspiration we get new motivation for how to break out of those ruts and how to make it move forward maybe this isn't a year where we act immediately and i think that's definitely the case as we deal with the remaining eclipses throughout this year which are really forcing us more to go within like i said hiding away and going deep with them and bringing out those buried emotions and sadness it requires you to take time to sit with your feelings, sit with what you know already, not trying to conquer new territory. That comes at the end of the year. But this is okay to heal those roots, and the best way to do it is by stepping back and observing what's going on, right? A lot of clarity moving forward uh, for sure. So, hey, oh my gosh, this video is long. Okay, so let's do this. Today, instead of the normal way I do my readings where I, I pull a stone. I pull my my grounding stone out. We all are drawn to grounding stones. I tell you what, when you go for a walk, when you're on the beach, you want to grab a stone. There's a reason. There's a reason for that. The earth creates all of this amazing, wonderful energy, millions of years in the making, in the process of that pressure. <laughs> right all of the pressure and all of the things align that can create a stone and the energy and the wisdom that comes with it and we're extra in tune with our bodies now right we're extra in tune with our intuition now because of this moon this week so i pulled this stone mine is amazing i found it on a walk of course and it's got this really cool heart that's almost burned into it etched right into it so cool so it's always been known to be my heart center grounding and stabilizing stone. I think all of us this week need to get out and find a stone if we don't have one. But just remember those things holding on to it. That the earth is so wise and it knows what we need, right? To keep that mental balance and physical balance. This is a week where we just ground ourselves and just be. Just like Psalm 43.10, right? Be still and know that I am God. That's what this week is telling us. So things are chaotic and our energetic levels are chaotic. Just be still and in the silence know that God has a plan and God is at work. As long as you follow what your intuition says and know that God is leading you to the right thing, the universe will respond and it will bring you what is better fitting for your soul now remaining grounded I think is the best thing we can do as we weather this crazy weird astrological storm that's going on that's ultimately bringing us to better things so that's what my stone is this week I do not feel any particular archangel I feel more led by the divine energy of the divine feminine aspect of God the energy of knowing the energy of intuition the energy of mother and nurturing of the self these are things that are being called on greatly right now in this time frame not just for this moon but also in our world that the outside needs to come out in all of us a little bit more of understanding and nurturing of the self and others to give of love <laughs> love right that is the true energy of God, and that's what sustains us all. So let's all raise that vibration. That's the energy I feel. And as such, I connect with Mary Magdalene. She is the representative, just like the Mother Mary, or, um, you know, every culture has a different divine feminine energy, goddesses, and uh, 
mother figures of various sorts. But for me, it is Mary Magdalene who speaks to me as the divine feminine energy. The true disciple of Jesus, right? He chose to carry on his word after after he died. So this week, I'm calling on the Divine Feminine to bring us a message as we ground ourselves and get ourselves ready moving forward and take care of ourselves. What is that message? Ooh, right here. I'm like, okay, it's right here. Ooh, <laughs> good stability moving forward. We just had this card, too. Four of Fire is a card that indicates that there is a good stable ground under you, just like the four legs of a table. So is this card. It represents stability moving forward, and that's where we're at. Contentment, peace, and abundance a happy home life, and the successful completion of a project. And isn't that beautiful that we got a full moon right there? Blood moon, all of that energy, just like I was talking about that's out there this week. And it's telling us that good things are moving ahead as long as we put up that hard work and keep, keep trying. But I've also pulled another deck, my Mary Magdalene deck, this week because I'm very curious to see what her additional message is. Uh, beyond the fact that we have something to be happy about, as the four of fire indicates, it's a card that means stability is coming, that there's reason to be happy and to feel secure. And in times of a full moon, the emotions are so high, it reminds us of where we don't have that security and where we need that <laughs> moving forward. And uh, I am going to ask, her, what her main message is for us in this time. Family, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting because this is a card, it's like the four legs of the table, it represents that solid ground of family that's under us. And I, in the tree, of course, to the tree of life. And it's filled with all these beautiful purple hearts. And I think that this is a card that reminds us that these cycles shift and change. And that no matter what happens, whether you have to work on something or fix something or rebuild those roots, right? It's like all of that I said that are under the ground, that there is the potential for it to happen and really finally change the way you need. Um, but I feel that there's also this reminder that your family, the network that is around you, both living and, and deceased and spiritual, they're all around really ready to help in this transition and change that this year is. But it's real stuff that happens finally, guys. You know, I know the past couple of years, it's always this, I'm manifesting, I'm thinking, I'm planning, I'm dreaming, I'm hoping, I'm wishing, and it's like nothing happens <laughs> this is the year it does and I think that's why a lot of us are feeling that energetic drain that's why I'm all up in my sweatshirt here y'all because I am very drained as well as my energetic system gets ready for this change and push that it's bringing us to better solid ground so just hold on and know that divine feminine is there to help you know how to care for yourself the best in this time that's the best you can do so go within find that love within yourself and we will talk to you next week. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Bye.